whenever the terms of a series involve the nth power, the ratio test can be difficult to execute. We have a test, though, which is perfectly suited for this type of series, the root test. You will learn all about it in this video. So what is this root test? You take the absolute value of a n and you take the nth power. Okay? And then you take the limit n to infinity. This will give you some L. Notice that this test will only be nice if your uh, series contains terms which terms to the power n, otherwise this limit will be very hard to compute. Uh, but then, what, what happens if we can do that? Well, if your limit l is smaller than 1, then if you are far enough, your uh, terms be, uh, behave like some l to the power n, uh, where your l is smaller than 1. So you, they decay faster, say, than some geometric series with the ratio which is smaller than 1. So your series is probably going to converge. On the other hand, if L is bigger than 1, then your, say, 2, then your terms in the end are going to behave like 2 to the power n. So they are going to blow up. So your series is probably going to diverge. And you guess it already. If L equals 1, then you are in between. So you probably won't know what's going to happen. Let's see whether this is true and why this is true. Uh, first of all, the first case. Uh, if L is smaller than 1. Well, what does that mean? Well, this means if you are far enough, uh, then your terms get very close to your L. Your L is smaller than 1, so and positive, of course. We are taking absolute values, so only positive terms. So your L is between 0 and 1, and smaller than 1. So we have room in between to place some small r. And we know if we are far enough, we get can get arbitrarily close to our capital L. So in particular, we get somewhere over here, in particular, below R. So our a to the power 1 over n will be smaller than some r, which in turn will be smaller than n. So that means that if we are far enough, then our a n is smaller than r to the power n, and then we are happy again because we can split our infinite series in two parts. On the first finite part, we don't know what's going to happen, but it's only a finite number of terms. If you add them, the answer will be finite. And on the last part, I will be smaller than some r to the power n, where r smaller than 1. Uh, first part is always fine and finite, and the second part is a geometric series with r smaller than 1, convergence to this sum over here. So if, the r, uh, if your l is smaller than 1, our series is absolutely convergent. You can do, of course, a similar argument for l bigger than 1, because if l is bigger than 1, so we place l here, bigger than 1, 0 is still here, of course, but it doesn't matter now. Uh, then you know that if you are far enough in your series, you get uh, very close to your L. But since L is bigger than 1, there's some value R somewhere in between, uh, which you can pick in between them. And if you're very far, then you're, uh, say here, very close to your L, but in particularly, particularly your terms A uh, to the power 1 over N will be bigger than this R, if you are far enough. Or your A N will be bigger than R to the power N, And we do again the same trick. Our infinite series is the sum of the first n terms where anything can happen, plus the tail. And in the tail, we are bigger than r to the power n. Now, our r is uh, uh, bigger than 1, which means that our geometric series, the second series, is diverging. So that's why we get the divergent over here. And what about the l equals 1? Well, it can be either convergent or divergent, and you can see that by applying the root test to the harmonic series, which is divergent, and the p series with p equals 2, which is uh, convergent. Let's do just the limit for uh, the first one. Then we take limit n to infinity of 1 over n to the power 1 over n, substitute x equals 1 over n, then we have x uh, to 0 from x to the power x. Uh, it's a bit of an awkward limit. Uh, but we can compute it by taking e to the power ln, x to the power x, and then x to 0. Because the nice part is that the x goes in front, so we have x to 0 of e to the power x, ln x. It's a continuous function, so you can take the limit inside. So you get the limit x to 0 of x, ln x, and you can do this uh, either by uh, changing it a bit and do a l'hopital, or you know this one because it's a standard limit, it equals 0, so you get e to the power 0 equals 1. So this is one of the boundary cases. If you would have, instead of the 1 over n, the 1 over n squared, only thing would, would change 
uh, is a, a, a n squared, which would be over here. Uh, you get uh, 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 x to the power 2x, and, uh, uh, and that would mean another factor of 2 just over there, e to the power 2x and an x. But then you get e to the power 2 times 0, so also 1. So for the other, the other limit also equals 1. So you see, if your root test gives an answer equal to 1, you don't know what's going to happen. Your series can be either convergent or divergent. So something similar uh, happens here as this ratio test. You only need the series itself, but it does not always give you an answer.